Hello, today we are going to talk about KD debug log. So the KD applications and KD source code use the Qt frameworks facilities for debug logs, which means using the functions in the in the family QDebug, QCDebug. So QC debug has as parameter a category, all of the, so these are macros because um, we need to use C++ macros for uh, getting the source code file name, the source code line number, and the function name using C++ standard macros. So that's why all of these are macros. So if it's just QDebug, then it doesn't have a category parameter. If it has a uppercase C in the name, then it has category as parameter. So let's see what happens once you have source code that looks like this and logs a debug log line. Where do those debug log lines get printed? To the console, to a text file, to standard error, to standard output? Do they get printed at all? So I have um, built using KDSRC minus build the latest version of the application aggregator, which is an RSS and Atom feed reader. Let's run the application from the terminal. So the application has started and we can already see the some of the debug log lines being written to the terminal. For instance, this one. Okay. Is this standard error or standard output? Let's uh, redirect the standard error to the so standard output to dev null. So they, it seems that the debug log lines were written to the standard error. So they're written to either standard error or standard output. And they're written to standard error by default on my Linux operating system, which is Kubuntu 23.10. Okay. So let's write down what we have already. So Ubuntu 23.10. at least for the applications that I have built using KDSRC minus build and I'm running using KDSRC minus run. Okay. The starting page, so I start searched for kd.org qdebug. This is the wiki page, the entry point web page from the KD community about uh, debug log lines. Okay, so this page. Now, 
there's the following questions. Are these lines, these log lines, the only log lines that are um, called from the C++ source code? So maybe the source C++ source code wanted to write 400 uh, debug log lines, but to standard error, we only get one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Maybe there's a filtration mechanism that makes such that not every time the C++ source code calls a um, function in the family queue debug, something gets written to standard error. So let's look at uh, those filters. Okay. That filtering is handled at least by the environment variable Qt logging rules. I can see a syntax like this. And then I can see that this is a debug log level, which is implemented as an enum in most programming languages with values such as fatal, error, warning, info, debug, and trace. And when the debug log level is set to debug, then all of the more important debug log lines will be written. So more important than debug is information, warning, error, fatal. And less important as than uh, debug is trace. So probably most of the debug log lines get written if you put the log level on debug. But then you also must say from which category, from which source, the debug log lines, when they come, they will be written to standard output, to standard error. And asterisk is probably the means that um, does not matter where the debug log line was called from in C++ source code, it will get written to standard error in this case. So the syntax is probably where and um, default log level. Okay, and now we have millions of debug log lines written to the standard error. And there's a million of debug log lines getting written while I just move my mouse. Or if I press any key on my keyboard. Okay. So the most inclusive way of showing most of the debug log lines. So in order for all of the calls of the functions in the family QDebug from source from C++ source code to actually get to the debug log, this is one of the filters that you can use. Maybe there's again a log level that's lower than debug and then you need to replace this with, I don't know, trace or something such that you get absolutely all of the possible log lines written to the destination, which might be a file, or in this case, it's standard error by default. Okay. But now the simple fact that uh, moving around the mouse generates millions of events, that's not that useful. And if are, we're going to put all of the debug log lines in a single file, this file is going to have sizes less than, uh, greater than, I don't know, five megabytes in seconds. 
and those files will need to be log rotated and will be will have a huge uh, garbage to real useful information ratio. So we can see that Qt QPA is about events. So let's uh, remove Qt QPA events and Qt QPA input. How do we do that? We can specify more than one such filter separated by semicolon. And probably we can put false in here. Okay, so the next step would be to have everything written to them, all log lines written, but then some excluded. So Qt.QPA Okay, Qt.QPA events this should be false and then that there was Qt.QPA.input make this false also Okay, so if I move the mouse around Qt QPA input is not excluded. Qt QPA input. You can see Qt QPA input events. So I need to go dot asterisk. Who knows? Okay, so something is wrong with this command. How about if we make all of the Qt QPA false? Oh, we need to specify the level. Wow, wow, that was the thing. So Qt QPA events dot um, debug. No, it was still written, so Qt QPA input events. So probably these are the log levels in Qt. So there's um, the there's debug, info, warning, critical and fatal. So there's nothing lower than debug. And there's info, warning, critical, and fatal. So the syntax is category, but should be the full category. So for cute.gui.shortcut map should be this entire string. If you want to specify any category under cute.gui, you need to go cute.gui dot asterisk to replace shortcut map and then dot the type. In our case, it's debug. So correct ways to do it is enable everything, then disable all of the QtQPA events, disable all of the QtQPA input events. But as you saw, it's easy to crash the application by just specifying some 
strange value in the environment variable cute logging rules. Okay, we still have events whenever we move the mouse from cute.pointer.velocity. Let's also do that. So cute.pointer velocity.debug equals false. Okay. And then it says that it tries to filter out the lines that are wrong and those will be ignored. Okay. And then it says that these rules, which in our case are separated by semicolon, are evaluated first to last or left to right. And if more than one rule applies to a category and type, then the last rule is uh, respected. So you can have enable everything and then disable some things. Let's see how it looks now. So there's cute quick hover dot trace. Cute dot quick dot hover dot trace. Like that. And then dot debug equals false. And it fails. Okay, so a way to do it is to just uh, not look at the debug log lines that are generated by the Qt framework, only at the ones that are generated by the non Qt source code. So by um, source code from the KD community. So that could be like this. Enable everything because we do not know what category names are used by non Qt framework source code, whereas we know that the categories generated by the inside of the debug log lines from the Qt framework, start with Qt. We go Qt asterisk dot debug equals false. Okay, so we can see debug log lines from the KD framework KIO. It uses HTTP, we do not know why. Probably to download the individual HTML pages. So this is the RSS feed aggregator. A feed looks like this, so it has a URL, which is an XML file in one of the two possible types. So eight atom at a, I know, two or three different versions of the atom protocol, and then RSS. So both are um, usually in XML format. And then the name of the id, which is the human readable text that you can see in the left hand feeds tree view tool window. Okay, and then it looks inside of that XML, says that uh, 
there's a blog article that has this title by this author from this date and has this HTML body. And then the HTML body is rendered probably using the Qt Frameworks web browser widget, which is called, which is Qt Web Engine, which uses parts of the Google Chrome rendering engine and JavaScript engine. And there's also tabs and navigation web browser. Great. How can I close the tab? Okay, so in here we see how the HTTP downloading took place. But we do not know the log line of what level was it. Was it an information? Was it a debug? Was it a fatal? Was the critical? So let's look. So this was which of the source code lines that call a function in the family QDebug should actually be written to the storage to the back end to the so which should be filtered and uh, not acted upon and which should be written out and then we have a formatter so how do we want the log line to be printed like Okay, this is also handled by a environment variable which is called cute message pattern. Okay, let's prepare a cute message pattern. Control Shift V and So we'll need to export this environment variable in order for it to be seen by the children process of bash, which is the aggregator. Okay, so the format as we selected it is time in format hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second, and then millisecond, followed by space with a square parenthesis, so this one. So before the end square parenthesis, there's one character which might be I or information if info. W for warning, C for critical, F for fatal. So that's just an example format, but there's many other possibilities. So let's make up something that's better suited for me. So this time I like it, the way it's formatted. A um, process ID I certainly want to have. All of the things should be comma separated. PDS category, yes, message, yes. 
I also want the date. So let's search for the documentation on this environment variable. So it says time process, we have that thing. Uh, the process is what? The process name? App name. So there's type. I'm not sure what that is. Let's see. Then app name. This should be around PID. We have category function message. Yes. So a message, we want to know which source code function or method has contained the source code that calls the Q, the function in the family Q debug. And with a minus, it's okay for me. Okay, so I see things which look familiar to me. The time stamp in the correct format, the process ID in the correct format, process name in the correct format, category, uh, level, and then the method name, which is C++ decorate, uh, whatever, the correct string. And then the message, this, this is special for each place in the source code where the debug log line is called. Whereas this is captured by the debug macro. This is also part of the Q debug function call because it's actually the, the name of the macro. Okay, let's look at the, at the signature of QDebug. So it says QDebug and then const char message. And can be called with uh, C++ style less than less than. So whatever comes after the first less than will be part of the actual message. The fact that we call Q debug not Q warning makes the level be debug. And if we call QC debug instead of Q debug, we also have a parameter for the category, which is in this case kf.kio.workers.http. This is the millisecond when the function in the family QDebug was called. This is the process ID of the process that called the QDebug function. This is the process name of that caller of the function QDebug. Okay. Where are all of the possible values for Q message pattern? It says in here that the format of the environment variable queued 
message pattern is documented in the function QSet message pattern. So So we already have time, which is this, might be time process and time boot. So time when the, since the start of the process. So I do not want this thing. Time boot, which is the time in seconds since the computer has started. I totally do not want that. And then time with an optional format, which is the timestamp. Okay, so that's okay. So probably in here in time format, we want to also put the date. Um, the date looks like this. So should be like this. Hopefully it works. And in the correct order, so four Y's, then two M's, and then two dates. Okay. Let's see. That works. So they come um, a comma and a space, then uh, the microsecond, yes. So all of these look okay. And is okay for me, but then what else are we missing out on? What could we put in the cute message pattern and we don't put yet. We don't have the file, right? Yes, let's have the file too. So file and then file separated by a semicolon to the line. Okay. Control C paste. Okay, so it says the has the full path of the file, which is great. And then the line number. So if I control click this thing, it goes straight there. So into the file tilde slash kd slash src slash ko slash src slash kio worker slash http slash http dot cpp online 4668. In order to enable this feature in console, you need to go, um, where is it? Settings, manage profiles, your by default at built in read only profile. This cannot be customized. So you're going to create a copy of this one. So I'm going to show you how to make both files and files with uh, file prefix. So with the protocol prefix file colon slash slash files without that protocol prefix files with a colon for uh, the line number and URLs be control clickable from the terminal emulator console in KD Plasma. So this is the terminal emulator console settings, manage profiles. By default, there's just one profile in there, which is uh, the default one, let's create another one, keep the default name, okay, make this, so click on profile one, click on the button set as default, 
and now we can edit it. Click on the profile, click on the button edit, and we want to go advanced, miscellaneous, underline links. Links are easy to recognize by the console em terminal emulator because they start with the prefix HTTP colon slash slash or HTTPS colon slash slash. We also want it to underline files. There's these um, allowed link formats. I do not want anything to be open by simple click. So I need to press control click in order to follow the link. So another graphical user interface application other than console starts. For files, there's the default text editor, so the application that's associated with .cpp files or whatever. No, it says in here text editor command is gate. Okay. So for um, links that for um, files that console recognizes as files, those will always be opened in a text editor, and this is the one. So gate. whereas uh, URLs will open in the default web browser. Okay, so in the mouse tab, miscellaneous underline links should be enabled, underline files should be enabled, open file links by direct clicks should be disabled, and require control key, where are you? That's it. Go apply OK. And now we'll need to restart probably the console application. Let's run our lines again. Copy. And this other line. Copy and paste. We're in the wrong directory. So CD. Tilda KDE SRC and then KDSRC minus build. Paste. Okay, restore the session. And let's see if we can so clicking does nothing, great. Control clicking shows a different mouse cursor and opens skate correctly and um, opens the text file correctly and at the correct uh, line so 301 so that's what we wanted okay thread id is also important we have type which is debug warning critical or fatal and there's this thing which is backtrace, which I'm not sure it works. Only available on some platforms, only the platforms that use the GNU C library glibc. All of the names in the call stack should be exported functions. Okay, just as an exercise, once we're going to enable backtrace and see how this thing look like, looks like. So at the very end, we'll have backtrace. So it says that only the five last items in the stack are going to be shown. And in order to keep the, a single debug log line, there's the separator pipe character used, which sounds fine. 
I like each debug log line to be on just a single line in the output. Okay. So it's very promising. Looks really, really great. So it says KXML GUI destructor. Cute message output. This is a function, a free function. So it looks just great. So this is a C++ object destructor editor. Where are you? This guy. And then uh, there's cute message output, which is probably a C++ free function. And then another destructor of the object QDebug of the type, whatever, yes. And then the destructor of KXML GUI client, which is from the KD Framework 6 KXML GUI. And then something unknown from the aggregator part, which is a probably a key part. The technology that the KD community uses in order to embed parts of one application into another application or graphical user interface parts of one application in another. So similar to ActiveX in Windows. Okay, but it um, it seems useful. This backtrace thing. Okay, so we know how not to write some lines by using cute logging rules. How each line should be formatted like using cute message pattern. Next up, how do we send this not to standard error, not to, or always to send it to standard error, like that. So this thing, cute force STDR logging. Can you see, we see what are the values of the environment variables while the aggregator process is running. Let me edit the source code of the aggregator application such that it logs all of the environment variables and we'll see if Somebody such as KDSRC minus run or somebody sets cute force STDR logging to one. Okay, so aggregator was a heavy application, so I switched from aggregator to KCalc, which is simpler to build. I've um, patched the source code, so at the C process entry point the main function. I've added this line which system calls a um, so starts a sub process from the current process which is kcalc which will at the end run the set command line or shell built in which actually does this thing So set lists all of the environment variables if you do not specify any of the optional parameters. Display the name and values of shell variables. So just set, you can see everything, all of the environment variables. Too many lines are written, okay? And we can see the environment variables. Let's see if um, 
they seem uh, sorted alphabetically. So the question was, is the environment variable cute force stdr logging with many underscores set to the value one? And that's the explanation why kdsrc minus run, the application started with kdsrc minus run, will write the debug log lines to the stdr. And that's not the case. can search for this environment variable does not exist. We can also see that the environment variables are sorted alphabetically or not. They seem to be sorted alphabetically. In the cute, in the area where environment variables with starting with cute exist, there's nothing with force STDR logging. Okay. But this environment variable is uh, useful and you should use it if that's the expected, uh, that's what you expect, you know. Yes, by default, applications when started from the terminal, at least on my machine, write debug log lines to the standard error, not as the standard output or to some other place. So that's why it's benign to actually call this environment variable all of the time. So whenever you're setting the, I know, the cute message pattern, also do export this variable. Okay. So let's see if um, kcalc works the same way and shows many Debug log lines. And this should be kcalc. Okay, so we found out about the variable Qt force stdr logging. The next thing to do is to see how we can put the output into a file. So that's easy to do. We just um, redirect the standard error to a file. So let's actually do that. Standard error is the file with file descriptor 2. And this should go to Okay, we click around and we open the help, etc. And we close the application. And now we can look at the contents of the file. Okay. Similar to how I can control click on a UR in a full path of a file and then colon line number in console and then Kate opens the same thing I want from inside Kate. So I have this selection and I want to go and control click or something and it will open this file at this line seven to eight in Kate in a new tab. I do not know how to do it by default. So maybe we can do it using one of the external tools. So by default, there's, for instance, the tool search Qt API. So I have selected 
the full path column line number. I went to the kit main menu tools, external tools, tools, and then search Qt API and opens an application, which is the web browser. And then uses my selection as part of the URL. Let's see how this thing is implemented. Tools, external tools, configure, search Qt API, edit. So this is the actual placeholder for the document selection text. There's an application, which is XDG open, which means open the web browser. That's default for the, this Linux user inside of this KD Plasma session. And this I want to hard code to Kate. I'll have a different name. The arguments will be just the path or the document selection text, if Kate supports such a thing. And then the rest do not really matter. So let's duplicate this external tool, add tool from defaults, search Qt API, edit. So this should be open selected file. Okay, this should be slash USR slash bin slash gate. The full path is probably not necessary. Let's see if that's the correct syntax. Yeah, surrounded with double quotes. Working directory document path might be useful. Apply. And the icon, let's change the icon. Okay. Okay, so let's see. The selection is correct. Tools, external tools, tools, and the last one, open selected file. And it opens the correct file, the correct line in Kate, which is what I wanted. But then that's certainly material for a shortcut. So let's see how do we do shortcuts. External tools, configure, this thing, edit, and I want a shortcut. How do I do that? Just a second. Okay, so we'll try to put a um, shortcut for this action. So we go in the Kate uh, main menu settings, configure keyboard shortcuts. So it's the Kate icon and says open selected file. And the shortcut, you know, can we have mouse shortcuts? Control click. No, we cannot have. But control what? Control Windows open. That's that Control Windows O. Okay. So select Control Windows O. And it does the correct thing. Okay. So because I keep each and every debug log line on a single line in the resulting file. And I'm using as separators comma. I can open this file in a uh, LibreOffice calc or Excel. It will see that the separator used is comma and will create cells and columns and rows as needed, which then allows us to do things like 
exclude all of the lines of level debug. I'm not sure how you do it in here. A filter button. Okay, so for instance, we only want the debug log lines from uh, K Help Center. That's how you would do it. Okay, so let's do everything from scratch. The preferred command line, the preferred file extension for uh, these types of files is CSV. So that's why I've renamed the file from a.txt to a.csv. Then you open LibreOffice Calc. That's Office and LibreOffice Calc. And then you go File Open. And then from the home directory where we created the file a.csv, this thing, you go Open. And it um, has default settings in here, which you can keep if you want. But uh, tabs, in my case, do not separate columns. Semicolons also don't separate columns. The only thing that separates columns is the comma character. And you go separate it by. But then you need to make sure that, for instance, you're not putting commas in your um, text messages. So you will need to replace that with, uh, I usually do it, I replace commas with a semicolon before actually putting it inside of the file. Okay, so it's Unicode UTF-A, that's a default everywhere except Windows, great, default, um, separated by comma, that's great, okay, it creates the correct number of rows, one row per de per uh, debug log line, line written to the text file, and then one column for each of the parts in here in the Qt message pattern. So this is the today's date, then timestamp in microseconds, process ID, application name, um, category for QC debug, type which is the debug log level, file and number, function or method name, and then uh, the actual text that the debug log, the source code sends to the functions in the family QDebug. Okay, so this is the last column. Okay, and it even puts the correct width to the columns such that the one that's most more important, the message, takes the most of the real estate. Okay, and then you select the row one by clicking on this one, and you go data auto filter. And then it says, do you want kf.crash to be the name of the column? I go no. And now all of the columns have a combo box where you can do all sorts of filtering. So you can go deselect anything and only show me the log lines from an unknown source code file. Okay, how do we revert because the, the combo box has disappeared. Okay, so the problem was that I have selected no in here. So where it, we go data auto filter. It asks if you want the first line to contain these combo boxes or so choose yes there. OK, 
Okay. So you can see only the debug log lines from the category K core add-ons if you want. Then you go to select all, select the correct process, the correct process ID, and all sorts of other filtering such as contains. But the most often I use this view in order to see only the warnings, for instance. That's the most often used functionality to filter the log file by a certain debug log level or more debug log level. So maybe you want to only see warnings plus errors, not debugs. Okay, so that's it, how to use LibreOffice Calc to open a comma-separated debug log file. Don't save. Unfortunately, the KD community uses the C++ programming language. Um, C++ exceptions are not being used, and even if they would be in C++, you don't really use, you don't really throw exceptions. So that means that if an application crashes, you do not get any log lines, whereas in an, another programming language such as C Sharp, you certainly will get all sorts of exceptions thrown that you can catch and then log in the debug log. The same thing for Java or for the interpreted programming languages, JavaScript, Python, Perl, etc. So the C++ programming language is compiled. When it crashes, it really crashes. In Windows, you have the workaround, which is SEH, structured exception handling. Even if I don't know, 80% of crashes, you still can uh, be notified when the crash occurs inside of your own process. And then you can at least log a log line. So it's very important. You're inside of your process, your own process crashes. Why would you not want to write a debug log line of the most important level with as many information about the crash as possible? It's strange that you need a, another process to monitor your own process such that crashes can be logged. It's normal to have your own process take care of its own crashes. If your own process crashes, you should catch an exception inside of the main function. Okay, you cannot continue because everything has you know, there's a really important error. You should close your own process, but in previous, immediately previously to actually closing your own process, you're going to try to write a log line of level error or something, you know, critical fail, where you say the current process with the current PID, the current name has crashed. Where did it crash? If your programming language tells you who threw the exception, what the exception is, what type of crash do you have? Maybe you have, you know, maybe you have the core stack of who, of the source code line that actually triggered the crash. And also, Debug log, li debug log should be enabled by default in all operating systems for all applications, but with the following settings to only log lines, debug lines of level warning or and above, 
to write to a text file, so not to standard error, write it to a text file, don't make, don't lose the important debug log lines. And then do a log rotation on the file. So there should be one debug log file for the application kcalc, one debug log file for the application aggregator. There should be a standard place where you find those debug log, line, debug log files. And then the files should be log rotated. So, so as more and more debug log lines are appended to the file, if the file reaches five megabytes in size, for instance, you're going to rename the current file. And that's it. This makes sure that aggregator uses at most 10 megabytes space per user to keep its uh, log lines. And again, you're not enabling by default only the debug log levels, warning and above, which there should be very few log lines of uh, that level per month. And if you want to send debug logs, full debug logs to an issue tracker, then you're first going to enable as verbose as possible debug log lines for your application, reproduce the issue, and then collect the debug logs, compress them and send it, send the debug log files compressed to an issue tracker. That's the way commercial software does it and that's the way KD should also do it. Okay, thank you.